Hi guys, this is Greg here and welcome to the Just A Mean podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Uh, today we have a really special guest. Hessel is joining us from the Tribe of Noise where they are trying to help independent artists to make money. Welcome, Hessel. Hey, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. So kind of jumping straight in, really. Um, like, Tell us a bit about yourself. Like, What's your background and uh, what has your journey been so far? Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, looking at my gray hair, you you uh, might understand that uh, I've been around in the internet business for uh, quite a bit, 20 plus yep. years. Uh, my background is industrial automation. So, uh, you know, uh, zeros and ones and robots and uh, uh, big factory plants. Uh, but moving forward, I ended up in um, uh, IT. And from IT, I actually ended up in 2008 uh, uh, trying to solve uh, an annoying thing in on the internet, and that's that independent artists when they when they upload music, um, it's super difficult for them to actually find uh, an easy way to reach their audience. You know, the people with 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 money that are actually interested in licensing their song for. Uh, uh, a, a, a YouTube video or a documentary or mm. um, an advertisement. So it's super difficult for them to, to make that connection. Uh, and for us, we at that time, we're running a video production company. We didn't want to settle for uh, uh, stock music because we, we, we hate stock music. We don't like it. And uh, we wanted to have access to, to original content from, from real talent. And mm. uh, so that's where our journey started in uh, roughly in 2008, setting yeah. up a... Uh, a, a basic community website. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the websites in those days, like MySpace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That still old, rings a bell. Okay. Social networks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we so we looked at MySpace, and one of the good things was that that uh, it actually empowered a lot of individuals to to you know create a website, upload their content, promote themselves in any way they wanted, and uh, even if you you know you were interested in in uh, animated gifs and and flashy purple lights in the background, <laughs> so you could do all that on on MySpace. Um, uh, we were like, actually, you know, one of the good things there is that you actually help independent artists to to present them the way they are uh and and hopefully it does connect but of course on myspace it was more about the the social journey and 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 helping them to connect with fans and uh we were more interested than uh, in in the promise like but can we also generate a bit of cash for you so that's that's when our journey with with tribal floor started but in those days 2008 uh, we actually used MySpace to to do desk research, reach out to individual artists, ask them if they were interested in teaming up with us, mm. uh, non-exclusively, like, you know, uh, never over-promise, always under-promise. So <laughs> o- o- always saying like, you know, don't give up your daytime job, but we have the idea that we can actually somehow hook you up with, with people with money. Uh, yeah. They're interested in original music. And um, yeah, fast forward to today, uh, there are roughly 50,000 individual artists who joined uh, Tribe of Noise uh, globally, like, you know, Mm. from every corner of this planet, 190 plus countries that that we see people joining. And uh, of course, we can't serve them all at the same time with enough money that they can call them professional musicians every single day. Uh, but we do our utmost. So, you know, really try to pull this off for as many musicians. So that's that's a bit of the background where I come from. And yeah. um, uh, we, we have a super dedicated team. So the folks that joined us in 2008, most of them are still with us. Um, and yeah. Um, uh, yeah, everybody does this, not just like, you know, let's, let's try to grow Tribe of Noise into the biggest thing ever and make venture capital firms happy. No. Uh, we are, by the way, we are a commercial enterprise. So it's not that we we do want to make, make money and a profit in the end of the yeah. day. Um, but first things first, help the independent artist, make sure that 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 we as a company have social impact. So that yeah. you know, a musician in Ghana or Senegal or or Indonesia has the same opportunity as uh, you know the one in like in downtown London. Yeah. So you know it's about their music, and if if we can monetize their music, that's great, and we will pay out the same money to the person in in London than we do to to the one in uh, in Accra in Ghana, for example. Yeah. So uh, how does that different from like the Spotify's and well, why why is that system broken? I guess 
compared to what your guys are offering. <laughs> well, what, what Spotify and the team of Spotify did really, really, really well, and, and so I love them for that, is they actually democratized the, the way we uh, uh, we use music now on our mobile phones and mm. uh, smart speakers and, uh, you know, uh, car stereos. And so, so they really made that possible that, you know, access to music has never been so easy as today, thanks to people like Daniel Eck and his team and, and but also Tidal and Deezer and all the other services is out there uh so that's great where i think we can do much more than than spotify will ever be able to do is that we actually are not a consumer centric company but we are more like a musician centric company so we're looking at the value chain right. of the music industry mm. and we go like okay somebody is making money here because they're selling a net uh, like an uh, uh, a subscription for for 20 pounds per month uh, and how does that money travel back through the value chain to the people who actually created that song? Mm. And then you can do two things. You can say like, okay, so you're getting five bucks and you're getting five bucks. And, and, and in the end, you know, you're paying 50 cents to, to the composers. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That, that, that's the model. So, and you don't touch the value chain. And that's actually what happened to Spotify and the other ones. So they democratize like the, the, the way music is transported to your mobile phones and to the other places. Uh, but they never touched the value chain in a way they're still paying out all these in between uh, uh, middlemen, and yeah. some are adding value, and some, yeah, you know, it's just a big question mark like what's your added value in this value chain. Um, what Tribe of Noise did was try to to shorten that value chain, so you have the content creator and you have somebody with a bag of money who wants to pay for 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 a license, take everybody out just for a sec, you know, just all the all the middlemen out and try to, to create a system and then bring back, for example, the label or bring back the publisher and say like, hey, if you can add value, then you're more than welcome to join. But that, that way, the value chain is super short. Mm. So the money actually traveling back to, to, the, to the rights holder or to the creator is uh, there's more money. Yeah, uh, it travels faster, so we pay out every single month. And, yep. and you probably hear from time to time when you talk to musicians, like, oh, after eighteen months, somebody, you know, I got a check for for five five euros or whatever. I have no <laughs> idea where that money came from and why did it take eighteen months? <laughs> that's that's you know, it's twenty twenty one now. So we that, that's where we that where we really add value. Um, and the other thing that we do is that we created some business models on our own. So, uh, which means that if you control the pipe in, like the music going to the customer and the pipe out, like the money traveling back to, to the artist, if, if, if you have like 100% control over those two pipelines, um, it's yeah, it's super transparent, it's super yeah. fair, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, sustainable. So uh, that's, that's where we really differ from the big corporate, uh, I don't think that they like the word corporate, but they, <laughs> are, they are corporate, like, <laughs> you know, thousands of people working there um the spotify's and the deezers and the pandora's and the other ones yeah they they uh they do a great job but i think for that specific part like how can we help independent artists who are actually somewhere in the in the long tail hidden because nobody knows them nobody hears them on national radio national television how can we help those folks that's that's where we come in yeah no that's, a, that's really um Really amazing work, really. Uh, how does it differ from? I, so I always had in mind that SoundCloud was like that proper alternative, but maybe they work in a similar way then to Spotify, Deezer, those guys. I don't, I haven't looked too much into the business models, but they always seem like the place where you find up and coming musicians in in my mind. But <laughs> no, no, no. But 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 you were right, and and uh, I actually had like in the early days when also SoundCloud was starting up. Mm. Uh, there were, I think, like two years earlier than we were i think they they were founded somewhere in 2006 yeah but like in the early days i i met with 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 the founders like alex uh on, you know you have those music festivals and conferences where where, yeah. you, where you meet each other with a cup of coffee and uh uh you tell about your plans and 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 like funny enough soundcloud in the early days had had that same mentality yeah like we we want to be there for the the individual creator we want to do a different thing the 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 main focus for soundcloud in the beginning was is to transport huge big files of songs that that were still in the editing mode so they weren't finished yet but yeah. it would just be a, a dropbox kind of thing to move that that file to the producer or to the studio or to you know the, okay the that's interesting so like but, an internal mechanism yeah, yeah. Oh, okay and, and cool. they did that really well and and uh, uh super powerful so that was a cool thing 
um, then somewhere down the line, venture capital firms came in mm. and they said like, eh, but you know, you should, you should be more like Spotify. You should be more like one of those services. So they started offering additional services, which in the end wasn't part of their, 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 their core message, I guess, or their yeah. everything. Um, they have a new CEO now, um, uh, so, so it might turn back to to uh, where it once originated from. Mm. So I have good hopes that the companies like SoundCloud actually uh, will actually do more and more for 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 people. And and yeah, you have you, yeah, there are quite a few out there that are now focusing more on uh, on the core, like how can we help a singer songwriter? How can we help? A lyricist, and 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 not just like how can we get this as quickly as possible to ten million people who will listen and pay a few cents. Yeah, I mean it's such a big thing nowadays, especially like you see uh, in the UK at least, like non-stop kind of things coming out about how artists are struggling, how um, everyone around the artists is struggling, so the people put on the shows and stuff because COVID has just wiped out such a large yep. industry in a way there. And people are struggling to find those alternatives that actually make money for them that can be kind of distributed. And I think that's one of the exciting things about kind of what you guys are doing and what some other projects we've seen um, are doing. I just think it's it's such a it's such a need, especially now more than ever. Um, yeah. And we don't know how long this COVID thing is going to run for if the if the vaccine is going to work on all these different mutant strains and whatever. But yeah, I mean, I think people are very hopeful that we can get back to this kind of state that we were but before. Absolutely, Greg. And and and, and what I uh, um, and it's and it's, and it's harsh to say, but but what you see last year and this year, of course, as well, is that when you have like income from live gigs, for example. So if you mm. if you are an independent artist, but you do your way around, you know, the pubs and the clubs, and you you play like a hundred times a year, and you make some 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 decent cash for, for yourself and for your band then um is there like is there a sense of urgency to have like a proper discussion about boring things like you know optimizing value chains and, and, <laughs> and uh looking at the way you license music and that kind of stuff for most musicians no so yeah it's probably this, the issue yeah, yeah so <laughs> so last year when they saw that all their live gigs were cancelled uh all of a sudden they 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 were focusing at, at spotify like ah but you know lucky me i have my music on spotify and they focused for another month and another month. And they were like, hmm, there's actually no money coming in from Spotify. And of course, <laughs> you know, my audience is growing and my friends and my family are listening via Spotify to my music. And so those things work. Uh, but, it, it, you know, it wasn't like a, it didn't generate any revenue. Mm. And um, for us that, that yeah, and, and sounds sad, but this is a great time for us to have those discussions to say like, yeah. where are you in your, in your, in your career? What, you know? Are you willing to put in uh, half an hour more to actually read through the contracts that you signed or to pick up the phone and call your, your national collecting society and ask if, if you can opt out some of your songs so that you, that you're more flexible to uh, test drive new business models. Mm. Um, so, so that, that actually, yeah, strangely works a bit in our favor to have those discussions now. And, and also the attention from other people looking at us now saying like, huh, they have been, you know, they have, they, they, they have saying this for 10 years that Tribe of Noise actually is a business model. Mm. But now all of a sudden we see it's the only, well, not the only one, but it's one of the few still left generating cash. So let's yeah. focus a little bit more on, on the Tribe of Noise model. So, uh, yeah, strange <laughs> times. And and yeah, I yeah, hope yeah. and I hope we can go back to, you know, going to a pub and enjoy live music. And, and uh, I hope that returns quickly. But But, yeah. But, but for now, we, at least we can have those discussions. Yeah. 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 No, I suppose it's been a wake up call for many people. Like some people had been smashing it on Spotify before. And then the smaller musicians were kind of like, oh, it's just Spotify. You know, we got cash in hand from gigs and stuff yeah. that pays the bills. And then bam. Okay. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, it, it's interesting, isn't it? How it affects different people and kind yeah. of change, changing gear a bit. How did you get in, into? So we, we've met each other through the grant for the web program which is a fund that's looking to help build better business models for the web. Um, did you know about cryptocurrencies and stuff like that beforehand, which kind of grant, which ties into this grant for the web thing or, or was yeah, it the I, grant for I the did. web first? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I did. I did. I, um, 
it, it, I, I look at uh, all kinds of business models for the last 20 years, and, mm. and I, I'm actually always on the foreground testing stuff. So I think Drive of Noise was one of the first media companies ever in the world to test drive artificial intelligence with IBM Watson. Uh, we, we were one of the first media companies in the world that was on the cloud from uh, uh, Microsoft Azure. Mm. So, so we, we test, and then, you know, uh, some things are worthwhile uh, 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 to to you know partner up with and and others you just go like ah, it's too early so I think you know in the, in the early days of crypto and blockchain uh, I visited you know all the festivals and the events in Berlin and in London and in San Francisco um, and of course you have the folks there saying like crypto will change the world and, mm. and you know uh, this will democratize everything and uh, uh, overthrow governments <laughs> I was like yeah you know maybe maybe not but but let's have a a grown-up talk about what this actually means and what what the power is of of, of crypto or the blockchain or the mechanism behind blockchain and crypto uh, for that matter and see if we can come up with decent business models that will mm. that are actually sustainable and then I, I i prefer to do it like in 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 you know blocks of let's say what can we do in the upcoming six months or 12 months and not yeah. say like in six months the world changed and no government will ever work <laughs> and the dollar is worth nothing um and, and you know i was witch witnessing those talks so um uh so a healthy appetite for uh innovation uh but also holding back a little bit about but uh, uh you know uh, too much noise saying that this was the 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 new the new way forward mm. so um funny enough i ended up on stage uh, during a blockchain event a couple of years ago in london where uh, th there were other speakers invited yeah. but i saw during a a uh, a lunch break that one of the speakers of a session about the topic music in connection with blockchain uh, uh, could make it to to the event, so they were yeah. actually changing the 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 agenda, <laughs> and uh, so I went to the organizer and said like, uh, okay, my name is Hessel. I'm in this business for so many years. I'm investing in crypto. I'm investing in blockchain kind of environments. Shall I go on stage with the other people in the team and tell my story? And he was like, yeah, who are you? I was like, okay, check <laughs> my here's my LinkedIn profile. Check some of the articles I've written about this. And, and they did during the lunch break. So they, they went online and <laughs> check, check me out. And they were like, wow, this is cool. There's a guy from Holland here. And we can just pull him as an international uh, specialist into this panel. <laughs> so I was I was there completely unprepared. Yeah. I had no idea who these other people were in the, uh, in the on the panel. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only thing I could do at that stage, of course, was was share my 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 uh, opinion about this industry, mm. and and you know from time to time give some bold, like straightforward <laughs> answers where I thought that that it was too much yeah, bullshit, and and just say like okay, <laughs> this is where we have to stop, this is where we have to focus. Uh, and funny enough, in the audience were a couple of folks who actually liked that way of me yeah. presenting uh, uh, the story to the audience. So from there on, I, I actually got involved in in, in uh, blockchain mm. uh, uh, projects. Uh, also, you know, London-based uh, project companies like uh, like uh, Chainzy, uh, which is uh, run by uh, Michael Minnelli. And Michael Minnelli is is a bit of the godfather from some of the blockchain protocols. Uh, really? Uh, okay. Uh, on the level like Sir Bernard Lee is for the internet. Uh, right. Michael, wow. Michael Minnelli is in in, in, in the UK. Uh, so we had chats with him, um, and and. The people, you know, in in that specific group that that I like to hang out with, had that same mentality. Like, you know, let's let's use it for for tech for good. Let's just use it to improve stuff where we think stuff is broken, and uh, not yeah, not not overthrow governments and <laughs> stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I had a couple of like uh, years of of those discussions and and test runs and and also with tribe of noise to see if 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 it could work. So we had those those MVPs and and uh, proof of concepts that we yeah. set up with some of those companies to say like, you know, if we would actually uh, want a smart contract for a specific song and it travels all over the world to the other side, how can we do like a micro payment live? At, so, so we we saw what happened and we also saw that some things like now with Bitcoin, mm. you see like how how ridiculous expensive it's now to to mine bitcoins yeah uh transactions costs are going through the roof so so you know uh 
Bitcoin is disqualified itself for some of these 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 models yep. now. So you have to look at other uh, cryptocurrencies or other like uh, uh, protocols in the, in the blockchain environment. So that was that was really fun. Um, so again, when I met uh, the people behind Grant for the Web, yep. uh, I asked the same questions, and I think that they liked me asking some uh, some of the more like in depth questions, like I've been there, I've done that, but how how's Grant for the Web? Yeah, yeah I mean, you probably, I mean, you probably counted on a hand at that point how many people <laughs> have been experimenting it in in reality like yeah. so they must have been like refreshed that someone actually had been there and yeah. start trying out all these different things in poc mvp forms yeah 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 and then but but the cool thing is and that's what i really liked about grant for the web and still like is uh uh they they they, they also say like you know probably a couple of things don't work but but we just have to go out there to as many people to as many uh, business projects and of course you know we will we will scan the business projects to see if if there are uh it, you know if, if there is a chance of success mm. but if there is a chance of success let's put in some money there and let's build an mvp or a proof of concept and let's move forward because uh of course we can be cynical and of course we can say like i've, I've been there i've done that it, it probably doesn't work <laughs> but but let's give it a fair chance and, yeah. and that's what grant for the web is really about it's giving you know bright people and bright teams the opportunity with a bit of cash to to actually do test runs and 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 build POCs and then share the knowledge. So even yep. that, that's the other thing what they say. Even if you fail, write it down. Why did you fail? Where did you fail? And and you know can we learn something about it so that the next team or the next project will actually take on this experience and and try to do better. Yeah. Uh, so it's a super open sharing community um and um yeah that's fun really fun and 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 um uh energizing yeah it really is actually uh, one of the things that i keep saying on i've done quite a few interviews with people other grantees and stuff now it's just amazing that the breadth and width of product projects they funded and the passions of the people doing those projects it just it never ceases to amaze me like how how, yeah, just the, the kind of, I think there's a, an amazing driving force there that when someone doesn't have to, when you take out that kind of element of worrying about money and stuff like that, like the the kind of explosion of creativity and stuff that comes out of that, it's just, it's just, it's so broad at the moment. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a, I think it's an amazing um, thing uh, to be part of. So uh, w how are you implementing the web monetization stuff? If, if you don't yeah, mind so, going into it, like, yeah, is, yeah, it, yeah, no, is no. it a stream of music for a stream of money, that sort of thing? Cause that's what we're doing with live video, but it might be slightly different on the music side or is it something else? Yeah, so so we uh, Tribe of Noise acquired a iconic platform in uh, end of 2019 uh, in the States. Mm. That's uh, that's called Free Music Archive. Uh, so if you type in the words free music on Google, you, you will end up on Free Music Archive. And um, the first thing we we had to do was was uh, when we acquired it and did our due diligence, we saw that the back end wasn't uh, up to par. So we, we yeah. had to fix that. So the first thing we, we had to do was rebuild the back end of uh, Free Music Archive. And in that process, we actually started our chats with with uh, with Grant for the Web, and they said like, okay, if, if you're going to do that, then can you by design, you know, from the core, start to play around with uh, web monetization? So with with the tooling that we have available, and of course, one of the first tools that they have available is from Coil, as you yep. as you are aware of. So that's that's a plugin for your internet browser. And the moment when somebody has money on their Coil subscription and uses that internet browser plugin. Um, and hits a web page that that is connected to that to that browser plugin. Small amounts of money go from the wallet from from the viewer to the person who actually uh, owns that content or created yep. the content or shared the content. Um, so that was that, that was the first project. Like, okay, let's let's do that. Let's enable musicians if they have a profile page on Free Music Archive uh, with a couple of albums, with artwork, with the, you know their bio, their stories, maybe some some video assets. Um, enable them in their in their um, uh, profile page to actually add a link so that if people with one of these coil wallets uh, sees their web page. Small amounts of money will travel for the the seconds that they view that page, so they right. can enjoy the music, they can read. But as long as they're on that page, yep. uh, money travels to to the to the artist. Um, 
that 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 works you know like that, that, so we have implemented it last year uh finished that in november 2020 and uh any artist uh, so we're now pushing towards artists saying like dear artist it might not be like a super money maker you're not going to buy your next car with this but be aware there are a lot of folks out there that that are interested in this mechanism so just enable that functionality on your page of free music archive so that if people look at your page money transfers directly to your account um the second thing and that that's also because that that grant for the web community is is so open we saw that people are starting to talk about hey but can we use that same plugin for for tipping or can't we sell um tickets to uh, a live event of a musician yeah and then based on the on the ticket sales uh you will also have access to because that's that that's really the cool thing about coil that i didn't uh tell your your listeners about yet um is that coil works for all the websites that have that that functionality enabled so it means that the end user pays like a five dollar subscription fee per month to use that 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 plugin uh but for that money he will have access to to all kinds of content from images to photos to you know uh journalist journalism masterpieces music all the website that participate uh, uh he, he can use that and those micro payments will go to those those owners so we thought like the next phase for us now is is, is to actually enable musicians to be way more creative start uploading maybe premium content start inviting their fans to live events on that specific page and just yeah. you know pay per view pay per ticket pay whatever uh do donations uh which is 10 times easier than 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 you know paypal donate buttons or all the other ones that you have out yeah. there uh because it will just be uh, a, a plugin functionality where you just click ah, donate a dollar click pots and there and you know the money is transferred um and again, I think an important point there is like the end receiver of that receives more of it. So the, you mentioned PayPal. PayPal will take a cut of any payment that they do. True, true. But but I think because we, we, what we've done in the process for Grant for the Web, and that's because we have roughly uh, 550,000 subscribers on Free Music Archive. Wow, yeah. Uh, so we, we, we've done like polls, interviews, uh, in-depth surveys. Uh, uh, so for the last year, we, we've been asking questions about how can we monetize? Are you willing to pay for this? Are you willing to pay for that? Um, uh, are you using PayPal? Uh, um, uh, do you feel comfortable with using something like Coil that you might not have heard of, but, you know, be an early adopter? That, does that, uh, you know, uh, frighten you or is that okay with you? So we have done a lot of research um, and also amongst the, the musicians, like, you know, is this a way that, that you want to participate? Uh, and it's really cool that most of the musicians, when I say, for example, to them, uh, those are micropayments, but they happen live. So if you open your, your, your wallet uh, and, and just have that as, as an additional uh, window open on your computer, if people browse your website, you, you live see those micropayments coming in. <laughs> Which is addictive. I can tell. Yeah. It's really, it's really addictive to see. It doesn't matter what the number is, but if you see like <laughs> a number going up, like during the day live, it's super addictive to see that mechanism work. The, the psychology, uh, uh, like up to here. Um, so, um, um, and, and but they are used to getting paid once, you know, on our website once a month, yeah. and on other services once every eighteen or twenty or twenty-four months. So yeah. getting live payments, even small ones, ah, that's a, that's an eye opener for them. So they love just the, the the fact that they can see that that they control that there is some some form of like uh, transparency of 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 money going in. And um, uh, and what we also see from the people that actually use it, uh, I, I think one of the strongest features about specifically Coil is uh, people subscribe to the open internet with additional content and that for the additional content or for access to the content or for donating for content, they only pay $5 per month. And, and it's an all you can eat kind of, of, of like setup. Mm. Uh, and they just love that because yeah, I, I, I'm subscribed to Disney. I'm subscribed to Netflix. I'm subscribed to <laughs> Tidal. I'm subscribed to Spotify. Uh, I have a SoundCloud subscription. 
and you pay for every vertical you you pay your yeah. your your dollars and uh so when i'm super annoyed when i go to uh, let's say spotify and maybe i'm lying now but let's say spotify and i want to find a specific album of the beastie boys yeah. and let's say that 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 specific album is not there and I just paid 10, 10 euros for, for my monthly subscription. Yeah. I, I get really annoyed. <laughs> With this system, I travel the internet, find my find my content and know that when I consume that content and listen to that content, uh, there is a direct link payment-wise between me and, and the person who uploaded the content and, and, mm. and in most cases, the, the, the people who own the content. I really love that, and it's early days. I completely understand that, and uh, but but yeah, just wait until bigger organizations start to adopt, or when uh, the uh, W3C as a you know, standard organization, uh, uh, you know, pushes a standard like a payment standard like this forward. Yes. Those are the days, you know, when when big <laughs> corporates go like, oh, okay, it's a standard now. Oh, okay, let's incorporate this, <laughs> and um. I suppose kind of wrapping up because I'm wary we've uh, probably chatted away quite a bit. It's been really interesting. Uh, is there a, is there any other kind of projects in like the crypto sphere or outside of that maybe that are, are kind of of interest for you? So outside of Grant for the web and all that, like, is there anything else you're kind of POC in at the moment which would be interesting to look into? Yeah, well, well, what we're trying to do now uh, for this year is, uh, and, and this is also an idea that's that's. Uh, not top of mind for the last five years, but, mm. but you know, from time to time, we, we have those board meetings to say, like, really have to, like, uh, uh, um, you know, put our money where our mouth is. Yeah. Uh, I think it starts to become uh, clearer and clearer on a daily basis that any individual rights holder, not just musicians, but also like a photographer or, or video makers or whatever, book writers, authors, um, have a... a like a, an online digital home, like a dashboard, yep. where they can uniquely identify themselves. Uh, so a global unique identifier for the person, the rights mm. holder, uh, with a open database structure so that there's always like uh, um, uh, an easy access to find the rights holder in an open database. So like, ah, I found this, the hashtag. Now I know who's behind this yeah. person. And from there, try to add assets to that unique identifier for the person. So that whatever happens with an asset, and an asset can be a photo, an asset can be a complete book or, or, or a song or a video asset, uh, always the unique identifier of the of the of the maker travels with with the asset. Wherever yeah. it goes, how you know when it's remixed or shared or whatever. Uh, there are all kinds of other like beautiful mechanisms to do like sharing and remixing, like, mm. like create creative commons licensing, for example. Um, that 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 we that we establish that that open culture where individuals are always uh, connected to a unique identifier and therefore their assets as well. Yeah. And then travel. That, that's something I really, I think it's time to to. And I know in the UK there's a beautiful project now for musicians. Uh, it's done by the team from Image and Heap. Uh, it's called the the Creative Passport. Um, okay. So she she's really trying to to pull this off for for musicians. But I think in a, in a, in a way broader uh, uh, perspective, like it should actually be for every individual creator that there is a, 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 an opportunity for them to be verified, be identified and, and, and just uh, make sure that under that unique identifier, there are assets and those yeah. assets, wh wherever they travel, there's always like a digital fingerprint saying like, ah, if you want to do something outside of the scope of, of, of the license, here, can, you know, this is a way to contact the uh, the rights holder. This is a way yeah. to to send a form of remuneration or like uh, you know negotiate uh, <laughs> a better deal for you between the two of you. Yeah, that's All something right. I've, I really love to uh, to get my hands on, and uh, I think this year will make a will make a proper start. Yeah, I think like the um, confluence of different technologies. I, th I mean those. I, d I haven't looked too deeply into them, but sovereign ID stuff yeah. like the privacy stuff all those kind of blockchain projects are coming into much more into kind of where you can start picking up and using them. And I think it'll be so interesting that tying it back into smart contracts, revenue sharing through web monetization, all those sorts of good stuff. It's, yeah, it's going to be it's, a really interesting mixing pot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It seems that all these, these, these pieces of the puzzle are getting together. Maybe not this year, but, but, but we're getting there. 
And uh, um, if, even like things that are around for a couple of years, like uh, the e-residency from Estonia. Yeah. That's also, you know, a great example yeah. of, of, of how you can digitize and, and unique identifiers for individuals. And from there, just add services to it. Yeah. So like, you know, I, I have your ID card number digitally. So now you are like a, a, a an e residence of uh, Estonia or of the world. And, uh, and we can offer you all these services because we recognize you. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I love those concepts. So I yeah. think it's, it's time now to 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 actually step up, make sure that we have a an even bigger social impact on uh, on, on people that are completely unaware that that we are chatting about this, you know, monetization model uh, like Coil and Web uh, Ground for the Web. Um, people in Indonesia or in 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 South Africa or wherever, and and help them with a structured way to access global markets and, and um, uh, based on the quality of the content and yeah. not based on, on their color of their skin or the, that, they're, that they were born in the wrong country, that, that shouldn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So yeah. it's that democratization, like you say, of everything, hopefully yeah. comes, to, comes to pass. <laughs> yeah, so let's work, let's work on that. Yeah. And, uh, and if some of your listeners or yourself or somebody that you, you know, talk with in, 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 in the upcoming uh, months, uh, uh likes this story or likes to connect then then uh, uh yeah i'm we're super open so they can always send me an email or yep. hit me on social media and uh, yeah yeah we'll have it in the uh, social notes um yeah, yeah. I, I guess wrapping up um yeah like hessel said please check out um stuff like grant for the web again it'll be, all be in the show notes where you can get all those links and really for me just a, a thank you to hessel for your brilliant conversation i think it's been really interesting um, thank you. And thanks to everyone listening. Um, thanks for tuning in to Just a Meme, where we're talking about the future of making money on the web. Uh, please do get involved. Give us a like, send some comments and a review. Please also subscribe uh, to check out the next sessions and spread the words to your friends. So thanks. that's it. Thanks, Hessel, once again. And brilliant talking to you. Thanks for having me. Okay, cheers. <laughs>